Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. It's a Sunday fun day. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you with an explication request from my off-grid studio, getting our kicks on Route 66. Uh, if you have an explication request, just send it to explication request at guruexamprep.com. Uh, this is about accrued interest. Usually this is a recognition question. So, you know, corporate bond pays interest on J&J &J 15 schedule. Uh, bonds pay semi-annually, so J&J &J means in English, it plays interest on January 15th and July 15th. That's what that means. An investor purchasing these bonds. So you play purchaser, I'll play seller. You're going to buy them on Friday, April 17th. That's when we agree to terms, right? And the settlement is when ownership actually changes hands. And we have the Uniform Practice Code, which standardizes practices within the securities industry and regular rate settlement is T plus one. That means one business day after the trade date, uh, Saturday and Sunday are not business days. A business day is any day the New York Stock Exchange is open for business. Again, you're the buyer, I'm the seller. And I say, listen, on July 15th, you're getting a check that represents the payment for the entire six-month period. And part of that money belongs to me because I was a owner of the bond part of January, all of February, all of March, and part of April. And you say, well, Dean, when I get the uh, check, I'll send you your pro rata share. I say, no, 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 no. This is a transaction, not a relationship. Why don't we just figure out how many of the days you owe me for, and we'll just add whatever that dollar amount is to your check. So the accrued interest test question is added to the price the buyer is going to pay and added to the price the seller is going to receive. Right? They make you sometimes think it's, you know, it's a minus and no, it's the same number. Right. So that's how you say, I don't want to do it that way. I said, well, too bad. The uniform practice code standardizes practices, trading practices in the securities industry. So that's how we agree we're going to do it. So when I got paid on January 15th, that was for up to, but not including January 15th. So I've been paid for 14 days in January. So 16 of the days you owe me for as the buyer, because you're getting that check that represents the entire time frame. The only number that can go into that first column is a 16. And you say, well, gee, I thought January had 31 days. I go, no. You know, we didn't want our high talent men and women to have to remember nursery rhymes and knuckle humps about how many days half September. So our uniform practice code for corporates and munis, every month has 30 days. So 16, that's either 16 or 30. You owe me for all of February, 30 days. You owe me for all of March, it makes sense that you owe me for up to, but not including settlement, because on Monday, they're your bonds as the buyer, and you're entitled to that interest going forward. And so that's why it's up to, but not including, that's 19 days. So the answer to this question is 95 days. Now, I think it's low probability they're going to actually ask you to calculate the number of days of accrued interest the buyer owes the seller on your Series 7 exam. Every once in a while, a blue moon, somebody tells me they encounter it. But the recognition of this is very testable, right? And then some bonds trade flat, and that means no calculation of accrued interest, right? So now I have a shortcut I'd like to share with you. So I call this, for lack of imagination, the long method. But you might want to use my shortcut to answer questions like this. And here's the shortcut. We take the settlement date, and we subtract the last interest payment date. I think it's a little quicker. And then you're not likely to miss this by one, you know, one uh, day, right? So the settlement date here is 420, right? Uh, April is the fourth month in the calendar year. That's where the four is coming from. And 20 is the settlement. And then what I'm going to do is subtract the last interest payment date, which is January 1st month of the calendar year. That's where the one's coming from. Minus 15, the last interest payment date. And when I do that, one from four is three. Then I just got to remember that every month has 90, uh, 30 days. That's 90. So 90 and 5, 95 days. I just think the shortcut is easier. But, you know, however you want to get there, you, know, you need to get there. If you encounter low probability calculating number of days, a high probability to understand the uniform practice code and that the buyers pay the sellers from the last interest payment date up to but not including settlement. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard, and I will see you for the next explication request.